Steve. everyone. The Fort Gables Fire Department would like to welcome you all to the September 11th 20th year remembrance ceremony. My name is Lieutenant Ishmael Roy and I will be your Masters of Ceremony. Today, 20 years ago, was one of the most tragic days in American history. Over 3,000 innocent lives have been lost due to the terrorist attacks on that day. 343 FBOY firefighters, 23 New York police officers, and 37 Port Authority police officers died while trying to save lives. That morning, they said goodbye to their families, as we always do, not knowing the events that were about to take place. There's a fire service quote that we live by, and it says, it's not about what we routinely do, but more about what us first responders are willing to do. On that day, September 11th, 2001, all first responders owned up to that quote, selflessly sacrificing their lives for others. The fire service is about traditions, and we have kept the tradition and a promise going to always remember and never forget, which is the reason why we are here today. To honor and remember all those who have paid the ultimate sacrifice on 9-11. The city of Four Gables had an impact during that time period. The city sent firefighters from our city and police officers, which we are going to recognize today. From the Coral Gables Fire Department, retired Charles Brannick, which is here today. I would like to ask him to raise his hand wherever he's at. Round of applause. Thank you. And retired Battalion Chief Daniel Thornhill, which is not with us today. From the Coral Gables Police Department, we have attending Officer Alex Castillo. Sergeant Erasmo Lopez. Sergeant Jesus Garcia. Retired Officer Henry Rios. <laughs> Retired Officer Bill Swikehart. <laughs> Re
retired Sergeant Pablo Garcia. Retired Lieutenant Robert Johnson. Retired Officer Joe Bolster. And Officer Edwin Pagan. I'm sure everyone who is here today can reflect and think back to that day where you all were. It's a moment in time that changed American history as we know it, and we will always continue to keep that promise to always remember and never forget. At this time, our Coral Gables dispatch has an important message. Everyone, please stand. Remember the tragic events that occurred in that in these days. Live to you in prayer all those who died in the Twin Towers at the Pentagon and on United Airlines Flight 93. Entrust them to your loving care. Console their families, friends, and all who mourn these loss in the hope that all who trust in you find peace and rest in your kingdom. We pray for those who courageously responded to provide aid and comfort to the afflicted. May they, their painful memories of that day be healed and transformed into strength and positive resolution. We also pray for ourselves as we seek your strength and guidance. Leave in the aftermath of this tragedy and under the shadow of future acts of oppression. We stand in need of your assistance. Enable us, dear God, put an end to fear, resolving to live lives that are based on respect for one another, by resolving to abide in a peaceful manner and never settle disagreements in our lives in a violent way, by resolving not to fall into the trap of blaming entire ethnic groups, races, or religious in response to acts of hostility, by resolving that justice not revenge, prevail in our world. 
Let us resolve that in the face of hatred, we will show love. And in times of despair, we will be voices of hope and creators of new dreams. That in times of darkness, we will be sources of light. Let us resolve and never regard forgiveness as weakness, but rather as a source of strength in our lives and in our world. Let us honor the memory of nearly 3,000 individuals who died on September 11, 2001, a result in your help, Almighty God, to truly live this way, so you may be glorified and your love made known to others through us. God's needs in Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Father. Please remain standing for our presentation of colors. allegiance will be led by Commissioner Raquel Regalado.
would like to recognize all those who have joined us today. Our fire chief, Marcos De La Rosa, and command staff, our police chief, Edward Hudak, and also joining us, our city attorney, Miriam Solar Ramos, and city manager, Peter Iglesias, and Edwin Santa Maria, who could be here with us today. On behalf of our mayor, Vince Lago, unfortunately, he couldn't be here today, but we have our vice mayor, Michael Mena, who will be sharing a few words. Today we come together in remembrance of September 11, 2001, that fateful day when our nation was brutally attacked. This was a seminal moment in our nation's history, and one in which we will always remember where we were at the moment when we heard that news. Personally, for me, it had a profound effect. After graduating from the University of Miami in the May of 2001, I moved to New York City in August 2001. Three weeks later, a terrorist attack at the World Trade Center occurred. There are several things that will forever be seared into my memory of that event. I'll never forget the feeling that came over me when the third plane hit the Pentagon. And any remaining doubt that this was a terrorist attack was eliminated. I'll never forget the faces of disbelief, sorrow, and the angst we all felt. I especially remember many in New York City and who were studying in law school with me that were personally impacted by the tragic deaths of family members and friends. A few days after the attack, I made my way down to what we all referred to at the time as the Ground Zero, just to get a sense of, of the moment. And I'll never forget the, the rubble still smoldered. And as I exited the subway station a few blocks away, several city blocks in New York City, and buildings were just covered in soot. People were wearing masks, something unfortunately all too commonplace today, but at the time, it's not something we had seen before, and you know, obviously shocked the conscious. It was almost like a scene out of a dystopian science fiction movie. This was no fiction. There are two things that I remember above all else, though. The first was the experience of witnessing our great nation truly come together as one, the United States of America. Today, as we endure what seems like an era of extraordinary political division in our nation, I hope we all take a moment today to remember that feeling of unity and remember that we're all in this together. The other thing that I remember above all else was witnessing the work of heroes our first responders from the fire departments and police departments that braved unimaginable conditions come to the aid of others. The word hero sometimes gets thrown around too loosely in society. But make no mistake, these men and women were true heroes. A few nights ago at a work function, I was speaking with a gentleman uh, who had a, a colleague uh, who was actually at the World Trade Center on that day. And he told us the story of her experience she recalled that she was in the lobby that day and they couldn't see very well. There was a lot of smoke, uh, but they were stuck in the lobby because there was a lot of debris falling and they weren't really sure what to do. Until at one point, firefighters and the first responders on site said they needed to evacuate immediately. And her recollection of that was that firefighters and the first responders effectively formed the line as an emergency route out of the building because the people couldn't see. And her recollection of that was 
walking literally through the smoke and passing your hand along the shoulders and the chest of those brave men and women as they formed the line so that people could get out of the building. Moments later, the building would collapse. There are many stories like that. We've all seen the heart-wrenching documentaries of that day. We all recall the stories of the brave men and women who went up the stairwells to save people's lives instead of down to escape the building. They paid the ultimate sacrifice. Today, as we come together in solemn remembrance, we should never forget the lives of the thousands of Americans who were lost on that ill-fated day. And we should never forget the heroism displayed by our brave first responders in New York, Washington, D.C., and Pennsylvania on that fateful day. But also the tremendous service and acts of heroism we see from our first responders every day throughout the country, including the incredible men and women that serve in the Coral Gables Fire Department and Police Department. Thank you all for your service. I have no doubt that many of you served today because of the impact of that solemn day, not on all of you. While it is a day of remembrance, we also come together to salute the bravery of those on the front line, as well as those that heeded the call to serve in the armed forces. We are forever indebted for their service to our country. And we also mourn the loss of the 13 servicemen and women who recently gave their lives protecting our country U.S. citizens and allies in Afghanistan. This is a sobering reminder that freedom is indeed never free or to be taken for granted. As President George W. Bush once said, one of the worst days in America's history, saw some of the bravest acts in Americans' history, will always honor the heroes of 9-11, and we pledge that we will never forget their sacrifice. We will never forget them. Thank you all for being here. We would also like to recognize the city of Coral Gables mayor during that time period. Mayor Schlesinger, if you could raise your hand with a round of applause. We would also like to recognize our city commission, Commissioner Rhonda Anderson. Commissioner Kirk Menendez. Commissioner George Ford, and our Vice Mayor who just spoke, Vice Mayor Michael Menner. At this time, I would like to ask our Port Gables Police Department Police Chief, Edward Pouet, to come up and say a couple words. know police and firefighters when the unknown and the unexpected happens we are trained and called in our noble professions to run to where the problem is you saw thousands and thousands of first responders including our own respond on 9-11 in New York City until the job got done but the most poignant part that touched me I do also, like everyone else, remember where I was standing here in Coral Gables watching both those planes and everything else in Shanksville as well as the Pentagon and where I was standing. As afterwards, when the cloud of dust settled, there was no race, there was no different breed. Everyone was colored in gray didn't make a difference who they were, whether they were first responders or just our society looking out for themselves. 
Here is my challenge to all of us. Because after 20 years, I think we're losing the ability to recall what makes our country so great, the aftermath of the terrorist attack on our country. So my wish and my thanks for the first responders that went up, my fellow brothers and sisters that went up, I still salute you to this day for what you did and what you put yourselves out to. Because this noble profession is one of the thin lines between us and anarchy. We proved on that day and we prove every day. So on behalf of all of the members of the Coral Gables Police Department, I honor our returning noble soldiers that went to 9-11, as well as our firefighter brothers and sisters who went up to New York to render aid as we do all the time. Thank you all for coming today, and I challenge all of you to never, ever, ever let someone else forget how this country responded on that day. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. We would like to ask our Port Gables Fire Department Chief, Marcus De La Rosa, to come up. No matter how big the call, no matter how small, you have no idea what God is causing you to But He needs you. He needs me. He needs all of us. Those are the words spoken by Father Michael Judge, chaplain of the FDNY, during his homily as he held Mass at the firehouse where engine 73 and ladder 42 were located on September 10th, 2001. Father Michael Judge would go on to become September 11th, 2001, victim 0001. As we just marked moments ago, September 11th showed man's capacity for inhumanity towards their fellow man. And every minute thereafter, with strangers helping strangers, firefighters climbing to the top floors in full gear, we witnessed man's capacity for humanity towards their fellow man. I'm certain, as has been discussed here today, Fire Chief that talks with his hands for holding the microphone is not exactly as, as I said, I'm certain that most of you in recent days have recounted your memories of September 11th. I bet most of us know exactly where we were on that tragic day. Amongst the most distinct memories for me was the birth of my son. He was barely six months old when the tragedy of 9-11 occurred. As I held him, at the time he probably fit on the length of my forearm, I recall discussing with my wife how would we recount the history of this fateful day to him? How would we tell the story of 9-11? We decided that we would tell him the story of 9-11 as the story of America. I would tell him that in a similar fashion how those steel beams weakened and fell under the tremendous stress from the heat of those burning planes, they strengthened the moment they were pulled. We would tell him that similar to those beams, America was brought to its knees, but it too it regained its strength. You see, what those terrorists got wrong was that they thought that those towers were the cornerstone of our nation. That bringing those towers down would somehow be the end of America. 
They may have succeeded in bringing great buildings down. They may have succeeded in murdering countless of lives. But they neglected to recognize that America is not solely a signature building, but something so much greater. The exceptionalism that is the United States was evident immediately once those towers were struck. That exceptionalism was manifested in the firefighters that although facing insurmountable odds, mounted one of the greatest rescues known to man. Firefighters from every race, color, and creed went into those towers and climbed as high as 78 stories and risked it all for people of every nation on earth. 9-11 is the story of America in many ways. It's also the story of the American Fire Service. As they did that day and countless days after, firefighters have done time and time and again, be it acts of terrorism, mass shooting, wildland fires, hurricanes, or pandemic, firefighter paramedics have taken those challenges head on without exception. 9-11 is our story, the story of all of us. Gathered here today are those amongst, are those here that were serving in 2001. Those that joined our ranks shortly thereafter. And those who were too young to remember what took place, but now joined their fellow firefighters in service. Together with our brothers and sisters in blue, we share an unbreakable bond. All uniformed personnel pin a badge on their chest, wear it like a shield of honor, and make a clear and concise statement to our nation. Nothing will hurt you today because I'm on the watch. Every day, that's our clear and concise statement. If you will indulge me for a minute, I'm gonna read some names to you. Jason Hibbert, Wyatt Chicolo, Samantha Putz, Christopher Alpazar, Joseph Allen, Nick Martin, Dean James Jr., James Dolan, Kyle Burnham, Brandon Ogden, Jose Pereira Jr., Nick Penera, Stefan Alonzo, Patrick Gould, Christian Carvajal, Troy Eastley, Jeff Cook, Eric Koss, Victor Perez, Christopher Butler, Jordan Lopez, and Eric Acevedo. I read you those names because 9-11 is a story of family legacies. Those names belong to firefighters who are the sons and daughters of police officers and firefighters that were on duty or serving in 2001. My family is the story of a personal story in 9-11. Andres de la Rosa, who's my son, who I mentioned earlier was born that year. And today he continues my family's tradition of service as a firefighter himself. Those sons and daughters in uniform, children of 9-11, share a common bond with those that came before them. A bond of commitment to protect and serve our community, to risk our lives for our fellow men. Yes, it goes without saying that 9-11 was a story of an incredible act of cruelty. Much important than that, it was an act that was immediately replaced by an incredible story of heroism, a story of compassion, a story of incredible sacrifice and bravery. 9-11 is not a story of tremendous tragedy, but rather a story of resilience, of tenacity, and of strength greater than any force of evil. September 11, 2001 was America's story. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. For the tolling of bells, you're going to have Firefighter Putts and Captain Amador.
nhau Today we will be performing the tolling of the bells. Long before telephones and radios, fire departments used the telegraph to communicate. When the handle was pulled on the once familiar red fire alarm boxes found on nearly every street corner of America, a special code was transmitted to every fire station. When a firefighter died in the line of duty, the fire alarm office would tap out a special signal. That signal was five measured dashes, then a pause, then five measured dashes, another pause, then five more dashes. This became universally known as the tolling of the bell and was broadcast over all telegraph fire alarm circuits. This signal was a sign of honor and respect for all firefighters who had made the ultimate sacrifice and has become a time-honored tradition. Today, we told to honor the lives taken from us that day while trying to save others. We will never forget. Firefighter Santana and Officer Cloud, we, be, we will be conducting our 9-11 readings. Never forget, for those who sat in terror on the places, for those who never saw it coming in the buildings, for those who jumped instead of burning, some holding hands. For the firefighters who never stop fighting. For the police officers who never stop protecting. For the paramedics who never stop giving aid. For the co-workers who died together. For the ordinary people who became extraordinary examples of courage. For the loved ones of the lost and the lost themselves and for the uncommon valor in the face of unspeakable evil. God bless you, your families, the fallen, their families, and the United States of America. Thank you. The two brave men who just read your 9-11 greetings are also two United States Marines. Recently, Firefighter Santana was deployed to Afghanistan where he did a tour of about a year. And for that, we thank both of you for your service and thank you for the freedom we all get to share today. Thank you. The taps will be led by Officer Putria.
please remain standing. Finally, I would like to ask Reverend Arnold Perry from St. Mark's Lutheran Church to come up. Reverend Perry is our police and fire department chaplain. We are very grateful that Reverend Perry drove all the way from North Carolina and left one day early to be able to join us today. We've said goodbye to everyone. We thank those who have served, but there's one thing left that we need to do, is to remind ourselves that it is an over. We still have things to do. We need to have a charge that will send us into the future with love, respect, harmony, and service. Let us pray. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console. To be understood as to understand. To be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. And it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Those were the words of St. Francis. Folks, the blessing of Almighty God, who created us, the God who frees us, and the God who stays with us through eternity, be with you this day and forevermore. Now go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage, folks. Hold fast to all that is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted, honor everyone, love and serve your God. To this may we all say, Amen. And I'd like to just close my part by asking the good doctor to play the theme song of what turned out to be that song for about a year for the 9-11 Remembrance event. Doctor, if you know the words, please sing along. some and some gave all and for that we will always remember and never forget 9-11-2001 this concludes our ceremony if I could ask all uniform personnel to come up we're going to take a group photo together thank you <laughs>